All right, this video, totally off the cuff. This podcast, totally off the cuff. So whether you're listening to it or watching it, buckle up, because it could be good and it could be bad. <laughs> But I'm gonna teach you today, I'm gonna tell you actually, I'm gonna tell you how I would start a successful fitness business in 2020. Okay, so I'm gonna break it down to a few simple steps. So maybe you're out there and you're thinking, I wanna start a fitness business like Brett, because I know that a lot of people out there sometimes think it's cool, even though I have a hard time of believing it and understanding it's not. Some people think it's pretty cool that Brett started a fitness business he coaches all these people, he has a gym, and blah, 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 blah. They think it's cool. So maybe you're out there, maybe you wanna be a personal trainer and train general population people, or maybe you would like to train athletes, maybe you're like Britt who is a soccer player and you'd really love to strength train soccer, uh, female soccer players so they don't have ACL injuries and you can help prevent that, teach them how to accelerate and decelerate. Maybe you're a bodybuilding coach, maybe you'd like to have a bodybuilding style gym, or maybe you're um, somebody who just wants to coach boot camps outside and do something like that. So I'm gonna teach you what I would do. So scenario number one, if I would like to just train people who need to lose weight, get in shape, and change their overall lifestyle, I would not go open a gym. I would not go buy a gym or a fitness facility and I would not go waste tons of money on buying big, bulky, and expensive equipment. I would not go sign a lease. I would not even look into it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about it. There's two things I would do. First, right now it is May 16th, 2020. Kind of a hard time to be able to go train inside anywhere. So the first thing I would do is I would plan for the next three to six months or for the remainder of 2020, if you're somewhere warm at least, I would be planning on training people outdoors. So I would get rid of my crappy car. The most expensive thing that I would purchase would be a truck lease. I would go lease some sort of a truck, a Ford Ranger or a, a Ford F-150, whatever I could load some battle ropes and a few sleds in from maybe Reps Fitness or even Titan Fitness. If it's a sled, I think you can't go wrong. Titan Fitness actually has some good ropes. So I'd get maybe six battle ropes, I would get six little sleds, I would get six medicine balls, I would get six ab mats and um, six pairs of 10 or 15 pound dumbbells and some mats and I would go and be a traveling boot camp coach. I would be training outdoors, I would be training in parking lots, I would be training at beaches when I'm able to do that. I'd set my clients distance apart. I would make sure that they brought their own water bottles. I would make sure that it was um, a, a workout that was convenient for them to where it would be maybe 30 to 45 minutes and that would be my expenses. I'd have a lease truck for maybe 200 bucks a month. I'd maybe put $2,500 worth of, of equipment into the back of that, maybe some cones, things like that. I would probably have some cones and some agility ladders and some jump ropes. I mean, these things are so inexpensive. You can't even believe it. And guess what I would do? I would go train people. I'd go coach people. I'd sign them up. I'd set up a Shopify account. I would set up maybe a click funnel to promote it and let people know what they're going to be getting into. I'd have a free MailChimp email list and I would have a Facebook account and Instagram account and I'd maybe run some inexpensive ads because you can reach a lot of people in a targeted area wherever I wanted to train people. Let's say it was in Wisconsin and I wanted to do Milwaukee and Mequon and Brown Deer and Shorewood and I took that and I would maybe spend 50, 100 bucks of ads. I'd spend more money on that than I would gym equipment and I would focus on service. I would focus on the process and the experience from the client to when they sign up to that week workout, right? But, you know, not that the workout's gonna be week, week, but the, the workout would be the most weakest part of what I actually do. I would have a daily system for sending clients messages and taking pictures with clients and doing weekly uh, progress tracking with them, especially in 2020 when people need more than anything, friendship and leadership and accountability and people that they can talk to in relationship. I would send them messages and text messages, daily motivation every morning at the same time I would hit them. We would meet for our workouts three, four days a week outdoors to get a really good sweat in or maybe more if I was just starting off. I would charge them, I wouldn't charge them cheap. I would charge all those people maybe 
$200 to $250, maybe $300 a month for what we're going to do because I'm really going to lead them. And I would focus on trying to get maybe 30 people. What do we got? We got 30. We got uh, 250 bucks, 250 bucks times 30 people. I'm going to train them all summer. That's $7,500 a month. Guess what my overhead is? Little insurance, right? I maybe have a $50 a month insurance policy that travels with me wherever I coach people. I've got less than half of that invested into equipment. I needed a car anyways, but now I can write it off as a tax write-off. I've got all this equipment in my car that maybe it's not expensive, but it's tons of variety and, and it's plenty enough for people who are just looking to get in shape. It's going to keep all my clients safe. It's it's going to be affected by the weather a little bit, but on those days, I'm going to come up with Zoom workouts and I'm going to go online and I'm going to make sure that everyone's getting in gear and doing a, doing a workout at home. And I want them not only doing it, but I want them recording it because I want to know they're actually doing it or I want to be looking and seeing if they're doing it because the Facebook ones are questionable. So I'd have that, I have a little policy and I would go out and I would promote online and I wouldn't post videos of myself in my underpants, in a thong or in my boxer briefs because you know I'm jacked and I'm, or if I'm, a, if I'm a gal, you know I'm sitting there and I'm in the mirror and I'm doing the whole pose and all that to get attention. I wouldn't be worried about that because I'm worried about helping people. And to be honest, the people that are trying to aspire to get to the point to where they can put their booty on the sink, not that there's anything wrong with that, those people would be more impressed maybe by someone who actually cares about them and not just cares about you know spreading their butt cheeks on the internet as Michelle would say, right? Yeah. So I would have a group of 30 people that pay me 250 bucks a month and I would, my, my number one goal, money, all that aside, attention, audience, my number one goal would be to get them results. So the only thing I would focus on all day, every day is those 30 people and getting those 30 people the best results they could possibly get from, if I had to go to the grocery store with them, if I had to make them grocery lists, if I had to make them books, if I had to make them training journals like we do in, in our summer program, we, all of this stuff we're talking about, stuff we do. And I would focus on the only thing I want to do is get them a before and after. I want to get them a testimonial. I want to know what, they, what life was like before they came to Top Line, what it was like while they were here, and what it's looking like it's going to be for the rest of their life. And I would deliver massive value. I would give them the best shape of their lives. I would train them wherever they needed to be. And... Um, and weather permitting, we'd be working every single day for, like I said, again, 90 to 180 days for three to six months. While all this crazy stuff is going on, if I wanted to start, that's what I would do. And I would make $7,500 a month. Now, what else would I do? I would take some of that $7,500. I'd go get journals printed for them. I'd go get shaker bottles printed for them. I would... Um, go to Starbucks and I would get them little gift cards so they can go pick up some coffee at Starbucks or if we're in Milwaukee, Anodyne or um, maybe a gro grocery store gift cards. So I can, get, they're paying me, but I care about them. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna spend $2,000 a month on them. I'm just gonna take it and spend it on them, which is a tax write-off, which is something that you can do to lower what you're gonna have to pay in taxes anyways, because I would spend some time not only helping them, but I would some spend some time knowing my ass from my elbow as far as running a damn business, which most of you guys out there, because you're more worried about getting attention on the internet, forget that once you make money, you're either gonna pay taxes on it or you can reinvest into your business or reinvest into your customers. I'd get free t-shirts printed so they could all be wearing them and promoting me and pushing videos of me and I would spend time, I'd have an hour every single day where if I'm not sending them videos, I'm maybe writing them a chicken scratch, handwritten letter like I used to, and I'm telling them where I want to be, and I'm encouraging them to get me referrals through the front door, and I'm encouraging them to go tell their friends and their family and their followers about me. I'm doing internal uh, referral challenges for them to bring other people to the boot camp because guess what? If you're doing all of that for your 30 people, guess what they're going to get you to? Guess. They're going to get you your next 30 people. And you don't even have to market. If you do really good with 30 people, they're going to get you the next 30. And now you have 60. And then guess what you have to do again? You have to maybe turn your phone off from, from, from this one and from, from this one. And you have to stop that for a couple days. And guess what you have to do? 
serve the next 30 people, get them their before and afters. You have to go right back to ground zero, right? You're feeling all good. Everybody lost 20 pounds. Their jeans are fitting. They're in their skinny jeans. They're bragging. Their pictures look good. Guess what? The next crop of people that you get in who need your help, you have to go back to ground zero. How do you eat? How do you stay motivated? How do you stay encouraged throughout the day? How do you change all these bad habits that they've been going through for 20 years, 30 years, right? And you start back at ground zero. And guess what happens? 12 years later, you'll end up like me and you'll have coached thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Hopefully you've maybe added some Britsters to your staff or some Blakesters or some Blairsters or some Bobby Teals that will be in here running powerlifting meets or some Donos and you'll have grown your staff and it won't be all about you and you'll be that trainer and coach that loves your clients, over delivers for them and then maybe you get to the point where you can turn it into top line where you have a brand where it's not even about you, right? And I don't know if I would call it my name or if I would call it a brand. Either way, I would take action. I know that. So if you're a trainer out there, I wouldn't sit and hem and haw about that. I chose this because I really didn't want it to be Brett Summers Gym, even though that's what the first YouTube was called. It's called Brett Summers Gym. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm going to call the place The Gym. That's what you're calling I was going to be like, hey, we're going to The Gym. Okay. You know? But then, but it, the company was called Topline, so I stuck with Topline, and I didn't want it to be all about me because I wanted eventually maybe Britt takes over the company. Maybe. Right? Maybe there's people kicking soccer balls off the wall. There's gold. There's goalies lined up, and it's it's this crazy soccer facility. But I I knew that one day I wanted to be bigger, or right off the bat, bigger than me. Maybe you should do the same thing because then the attention you can do personal branding and they know who you are but you also have something that's a little bit bigger than you so that when the Blake comes and the Bobby comes and the whoever and the Britster comes they can take and, and they can do something with it that you could never do on your own so that's how I'd be thinking as I get started instead of questioning what do I need I'd, for, I'd just be taking action start the website what am I going to call the domain I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just I'd call it I'm getting your ass in shape.com and people will go sign up that's what people care about. Like they care about that you're actually doing stuff. They don't care about this and that and getting all that because you're gonna get bogged down and then it's gonna be two weeks into it and you won't even have a domain. You won't even have an Instagram account because you don't know what you want to call it. You know, it took a lot of years before Kanye was was one name to where it was just Kanye, right? To where when, if you said the name Jordan, you know we're who we're talking about. You are wearing Jordans. You're not wearing Michael Jordan from North. You're wearing Jordans. You know who they are. It takes a long time for people to have that understanding of what is what could um, iconic. They make the the picture frames, right? Nobody knows that, but when you hear iconic, maybe you know it. You you know Brent Nike. What, what's Nike? You don't know what Nike is until later on they built their brand. If Nike didn't do what they had done and have all the different athletes and, and expand over the years, you wouldn't even know it. But now you know it as Nike. So one day, no matter what you call it, it could be um, get fit training. And it might suck. That might sound stupid for a while. But if you had 20,000 clients and you turned into the next Jillian Michaels or Brett Summers, maybe you turn something into it and you'd be a success. So that's what I would do if I wanted to start a quick gym. Now I would do all the exact same things, except that I would change a few things if I was a, like everybody else, you want to be strength and conditioning coaches. You want to be, you know, really want to train people. What I would do in that situation is a little bit different. I still would not um, open my own facility because that's ridiculous because you don't even know how to balance your own books. You can't even balance your own balance sheet right now. So you going and, and taking on a big lease is stupid. You have no clue what you're doing. You have shown and proven no commitment to yourself. I'm trying to stop you from wasting your money. So don't go and do that. If I wanted to start, let's say I'm a strength and conditioning coach and I look at Rogue Fitness every day and Elite FTS and I look at the equipment and I get all fired up about it and then I'm you know all about training people, strength training people, I would probably, would I, I would try and rent space from someone else. I would, I would go in somewhere else and say, hey, I'm going to give you $400 a month, someone who had a gym. Now, if it was right now, we're coming out of this safer at home and it's all up in the air, it might be a little different. But when we're coming out of this, I would look for that. If I couldn't do that, to be honest, you know what I would do? I would buy two cow stall mats. I would buy a squat rack, a, a, a squat stand from one of these companies, 
probably not Rogue Fitness for my own personal reasons. Maybe I would go get a 531 squat stand from Elite FTS or I would go to Reps Fitness and get one of their Rep 5000 racks. I would put it in the back of a big pickup truck that I would lease, again, like the first example, and I would throw some plates and I'd throw a bar in there, I'd throw some blast straps from Elite FTS on there, I'd buy a landmine, I'd buy some bumper plates that could get beat up as I drive all over the city and I train my athletes and I go to football fields for free and I train my athletes weather permitting. And if I couldn't get out to the field, I would go train, I'd take that squat rack, I'd back it up, I'd do all the heavy lifting, I would pick the rack up, I would go put it under a pavilion at a local park, I would move some of the benches out of the way, and I would have people squatting and deadlifting and benching and speed benching, and I would try and earn my chops as a trainer. Would I charge them next to nothing or do it for free like some coaches I know who who just train people for free? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't train it for free. I would get a Stripe account or I would get a, what's the what's the Square account? I'd get Square, I'd get Shop, I'd probably just do Shopify and I have people paying full and I wouldn't charge them for just one. I'd say, hey, we're doing a 12 week program. Your 12 week program is gonna be a payment on the first of every month. I'm gonna charge you 500 bucks a month, okay? Now, when I first started and someone was willing to pay 500, I didn't even care at that point how many hours or how many sessions, I wanted results. So if they're, they came in and said they wanted to get faster in their 40 yard dash, they wanna get ready for football season or baseball or basketball, I would say here's the 12 week program, here's what we're gonna do. I'd come up with a simple price, I would charge them, let's say it was 500 bucks to maybe 600 bucks, I'd say here's 600 bucks, and I would focus on trying to get, to be honest, I'd get like 10 to 15 clients. Let's just say I got 12, 600 bucks times 12, $7,200 a month. I have to go find 12 people who trust me enough to give them everything I got. I'd pour everything I could into them. I would log their workouts. I would track them. I would track their numbers. I'd call their parents. I would talk to their parents. I'd meet with their, I would say, hey, I want to talk to you once a week with your parent or once every two weeks probably because parents don't need that much. You know, I'm gonna talk to you every day. Here's the things you need to do. I would be tracking their Instagram stuff. I would be trying to make sure that they're being leaders. I would talk to them about everything I could to try and make sure they understood that they need to drink water and they need to eat their meals. Quentin Redding, Evan Redding, actually get your meals in. Two of my clients who I've been harping on to make sure that they're eating and they're not, they're staying up till 4 a.m. My clients staying up till 4 a.m. and waking up at 2 in the afternoon. Dang. So I had to lay the wood, I had to lay the wood on these dudes and we got back to it. And I'm like, hey, dude, if you, you know, I'm gonna start scheduling your sessions at 10 a.m. if you're sleeping till two, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead you. And I would take those 10 to 12 athletes and I would deliver the world's greatest training to them that no one else could compare with. And as I got better, I would also realize, hey, I can only do this so long. So every money, every, every dollar I'd spend, I would do the same thing as before. I'd reinvest it into my client. I'd maybe pick up a couple small little pieces of equipment that could travel well. Some hamstring sliders, those are furniture movers. So those are like 12 bucks. I'd go get some furniture movers from Fleet Farm or from Home Depot. I would, again, I'd have some bands that I could pick up band packs. I'd keep them real clean so they didn't get all beat up. I wouldn't just let the athletes take them. I'd buy some hip circles. But again, we're talking inexpensive equipment. I'd go on, I'd go on on um, Amazon, I would order a couple hip thruster pads so we could do barbell hip thrusters. I might go on repsfitness.com and just get a couple of jump plyo jump boxes, which would be a little expensive, but it would keep my athletes safe and we could jump out on the football field. I'd buy a couple of light med balls. I would probably get those from, I'd probably get those from, I'd probably go with Elite FTS. Again, I just wouldn't order Rogue Fitness equipment. So, I mean, if you're sitting there and you follow them and you get all greased up by that, their customer service is about as good as going to the DMV. So I'd highly suggest that you would avoid that situation just like you would um, the coronavirus. And, uh, and, and I would just have that equipment and I would add a little bit of that, but really what I'd be thinking about is the business end and how long could I keep that up? Who else could I add value to? I'd probably call up every local high school and see if I could coach their athletes for free for a while or do something to develop a network and relationships with them and to get to be a part of something so that if I did ever open up a facility, other people would be involved. I wouldn't ever think about opening a facility until I had a plan in place for me not coaching. Till I, till I, so, which is hard, right? Because I'm telling you, you'd have to coach and you deliver all this value and I think you should do that. I think you should taste the, you know, taste the dirt, 
so to speak. I think you should know what it tastes like so that when someone else comes, you can lead them. Because if Britt comes in, she wants to be a coach, and I don't know what I'm doing. I've never really went all in. I can't I can't teach them. I can't teach them how I over delivered to all these customers. And I always call it the little things. I did a little things. What are the little things? Same things I was talking about before. Sending the text, sending the video, sending the grocery list to the point where they knew that this dude cares so much. I hold them accountable. I need you there. I need you. I, I, while they were in working with me, I'd be talking about the next day. We do that at boot camp right now or outside. I say, hey, who's coming tomorrow? Who's showing up tomorrow? Who's bringing a friend in? I'm pushing referrals. I'm pushing commitment. I'm pushing accountability. So those are the things I would be doing as a successful strength and conditioning coach um, to start off successful in the year 2020. We're halfway through the year. You've got six months. If anybody followed this advice right now, they should not be making anywhere less. And I would just bump the numbers up because that's just how I did it in the beginning to 8333. Instead of 7,200, I'd work backwards off of that. I'd set my prices off of that. So maybe at 83.33 for boot camp, I would need 33 or 35 customers at that $250 mark. And for the athletes, I'd probably need around um, 15 or 16 people to make $100,000 a year. Crazy, $100,000 a year working backwards off the numbers. And that's what I would actually have to do as far as the work and the promotion and setting up the websites and doing that. And I would go all, all in and I'd get everything I had. And my whole goal this whole time I'm doing all this would be basically accepting the fact that I'm gonna take no money. I'm gonna basically live like, like I did. No car, no insurance, um, no extra insurance, no clothes. I remember wearing Abercrombie jeans that literally the knees would like just, they weren't, Abercrombie jeans with the holes. They were custom holes because they were so worn out. And I just didn't care about it because I knew that if I had the shoes and the Jordans or whatever else, that I was just some, I just looked like a dumbass, basically, who had cool stuff. And no one would care. No one would care about the cars. No one would care about any of that. They only cared that I care about them and I was right. And that's what you would do if you wanted to be a really successful strength and conditioning coach or personal trainer in the rest of 2020 and make about $100,000 a year, and basically eat dirt for the next 12 to 24 months, all while having the game plan of setting myself up for the future, because guess what, when you're like me and you're about to turn 34, you go, yeah, I, I mean, I'm definitely in good enough shape and I have enough energy, but I'm not going to be getting down on my back every single day, this quarantine has taught me that. Like, I don't wanna necessarily be laying on the ground, showing people how to do the exercises, talking to them about how to eat, like I've been doing it for so long, it's like, dude, we're gonna eat healthy. And they're like, well, what is that? You know what it is. You know damn well what it is. We're gonna eat fruits and nuts and vegetables, and if it wasn't grown from the ground or killed, we're not gonna eat it. How about that? It's pretty simple. But at the end of the day, you know, you gotta start back at ground zero and be patient with people, and maybe I'm getting older and maybe a little ornery, and I don't have the time and patience to do that. So I know I had need, if I'm starting and you're 19, 20, 21, 22, and you wanna be the successful trainer, first of all, I would do that, and then the last thing I would do is I would follow my Instagram account and I would follow me and I would send me messages and I would say, Brett, I heard your video on how to become a successful trainer, start a successful fitness business in 2020 and I heard it and everything you said was stuff that makes sense and it's cheap and it's inexpensive and I know I can do it and guess what? You're still not gonna take action on it because like your clients, you need accountability from someone who's been where you are. So you might reach out and be like, Brett, how can I hire you? How can you hold me accountable and help me go through this process? Because everything you said in that video came out of your head so quick and it seemed so easy to you. You didn't look at your computer screen, which has just been sitting on Google the whole time um, because we were looking up some funny definitions before and you're like, Brett, you knew all this stuff right off the top of your head. You could design a business and how long has this been going? 20. So it's been going 20 minutes and we came up with two six-figure businesses within 20 minutes and it seemed pretty easy for you. Well, that's because I've done it before and I wish I would have done this immediately instead of waiting till 2013 when I hook up with Bedros, start following his stuff and get an actual business mentor. So don't just do it alone. Hire the coach. So that's 7,500 you're making in a month. You're like, dude, Brett, I'm gonna give you 1,500 so we can scale this so I can be prepared so I understand how to screw the IRS every year so I can buy more equipment so I know when it's the right time to buy a facility, when it's the right time to expand into a facility, when it's the right time to hire an assistant, when it's the right time to hire a trainer who can work underneath me because now I've got 100 clients and now I can't do it anymore and the thing's about to burst and it's not fun anymore and I can save you from doing that. So in 2020, follow those simple steps. Are there a bunch of other little things that I would do? 100%, 100%. But all those little things, the, the best part about it is that a lot of those things are free. 
that just require effort. You can go on Instagram and type in Milwaukee. We live in Milwaukee, that's why I'm using it as an example. Or you can type in Air, uh, Flagstaff or you can type in Scottsdale and you can go look and you can see 60 people who are training. Or you can t or go type in a high school football team's name or, or go on, like in Wisconsin, we have WIS Sports. It shows all the high school athletes' names. I can take the name, like we did with Blake. We can go on to top line football training. We can type the kid's name in. He's a junior, really good, big recruit, all American. Boom, we add him to the list. We add him where we add him on Instagram. Then he sees what we're doing. We're all about football. We're all about putting stuff out there. And he goes, dang, these guys look good. Look, they're training D1 guys. They've got guys who have went D1. They've got guys that went to the NFL. They've worked with these guys. Now they follow us back. Now they see our stories every day where we're training 10, 20, 30 people, athletes, whatever it is. And they're like, dang, I'd like to be a part of that. They reach out. They get a sample session. And guess what? Then they would sign up for training with me. And then they'd be on there. And it's free. But guess what? That's work. Are you willing to do the work? And, and I think it's important too, if I'm doing it, I do at a certain point when it's just you coaching, remember this. So when you're doing all this and you're doing all, and you, and you hit those numbers, you got the 33 boot campers that are outside with you doing your, your cardio, 45 minute sweat sessions. And then you go and you're the, you're the strength coach or the personal trainer. You've got the 14 people that are doing booty building or bodybuilding or athlete training with you. And you've got those 14 people, you're making $8,000 a month, 83, 33, you're making a hundred grand a year. And you go, oh, that's a lot of work. Now I got to go deliver to these clients. Yes. Stop focusing on posting all the time about your, the stuff you were doing with to try and get clients and just focus on putting out the content of what you're doing with your athletes. So now you don't have to think about what you're putting out there anymore. You don't have to be in the video all the time with yourself anymore. Now your clients can be the superstars. You can post about them in the videos. You can show their progress, their transformations and how the awesome results that they're getting and how good they're getting. And guess what? That's going to bring in the next people and just have a plan in place for the next group. Because if you add another 20 people in there, when it's just you, I fell into this trap because I was so good at getting people in that I would be getting so many people in and having to start so many new people. I didn't have a system or a process yet. And then some of the people who I had to start with, they didn't get the results they needed or they didn't get the attention or the leadership or the accountability they needed because I was going on to the new people and they would feel slighted and then they'd leave. So you'd have attrition. And then those same new people that I got, I'd go get another, I, I mean, I was good. So I'd be getting, I'd be getting 20 and then I get another 20 and then I get another 20 customers and I was good at that. But when I was the best is when I would focus on my customers and get them the results they needed, let them bring me the new people in and then start to bring people around me to serve those people and over deliver. Like we talked about in the earlier example, text messages, grocery store tours, going through their cupboards, throwing stuff away, taking the bread and smashing it over my knees and throwing it out the white breads and the, the sugar cereals and the sugar snacks and the chocolate. Like Brit, she probably got like a drawer with like candy, but cause she likes chocolate every once in a while. Dark chocolate. I'm taking the dark chocolate with sea salt and I'm airing it out. I'm just launching it. Right? because I care about them, I want them to do the right stuff. So for all you guys out there who want to be a successful strength trainer or coach, that's what I would do. I wouldn't take on the overhead. I wouldn't go online and brag about how I'm going to open up a gym. I wouldn't go try and poach other people's staff yet because I don't have any damn money to pay the staff. I would just focus on what I'm doing. So go be a success. Reach out to me if you need anything. But if you're a trainer, that's what you need to do. This one's just for you, baby. We'll catch you up.